When we started our businesses, we thought that because we were great plumbers, that would translate into being great business owners. But that couldn't be further from the truth. In fact, successfully operating a home service business has very little to do with the trades. Hey guys, I'm Tony Wally. And I'm Matt Baldwin, and this is The Coach's Corner, a podcast dedicated to helping you create a thriving business and stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a CEO. Welcome to the show. What's up, man? Yo, what's up, dude? How you doing? Man, it's carnival season in Mobile, Alabama. That's why I got this uh, purple Mardi Gras shirt on. I got, uh, man, I just, this shirt, when I look at it, I just smile and I, I just, I'm so glad to be from Mobile, the birthplace of Mardi Gras. Don't listen when people say New Orleans is the birthplace of Mardi Gras. I mean, it could very well be. It's a highly, highly debated thing, but if you're going to listen to me, Mardi Gras was born in Mobile, and Joe Kane is buried in Mobile, father of Mardi Gras. Anyway, I like your I like your sweatshirt, man. Go dogs, huh? Yeah, go dogs, man. And you got it, man. Listen, since we're, I mean, this is see, a to, plum- see, see to you, I'm also probably wearing a carnival sweatshirt. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. Look, I'm I'm from Alabama. Listen, I went to Auburn for a while, so I, I'm a big Bo Jackson fan. I have to be. Um, there's Auburn in my heart, but I love Alabama too, and that is a super unpopular. That's almost sacrilegious to mm-hmm. be like that. You got oh, that'd, ju- be like, that'd be like living in Mobile and being a dogs fan. Yeah, well, run, run for the hills. In November, you better pick a side, and it better be consistent. You can't jump from one side to the other. Like, just because Nick Saban is gone, we can't be jumping ship, you know. And you know, whatever happens with Hugh Freeze with Auburn, you know, you're gonna you got to be a ride or die. So on 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 Iron Bowl day, I'm Auburn, man. I'm Auburn. I can't switch. I can't ever switch. But I love Alabama. I love the Crimson Tide. Um, but anyway. You got to be a dog sometimes. That's what I want to say. That's the theme um, that I'm feeling in my heart. I've had about 14 cups of coffee, and I am freaking buzzing right now. <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm humming. Yeah. But well, when you talk about being a dog and you having to be a dog sometimes, you're going to get your ass beat sometimes in this business, oh, and you're going to get knocked down. And um, whether it's because you're slow or because a guy, you go home thinking about the same guy every night, you want to fire him, but you can't. Um, there's so many things that you just have to have the stomach for, you yeah, know? Man. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was just, I was actually, you know, just talking to one of my private clients um, before this. And, uh, you know, you know, they were like, oh, you know, we're kind of nervous. You know, do we buy another truck or, you know, our credit card bills up to this much and we really want to pay that down. And, and I said, I, I I said to him, guys, I said, hey, guys, look, there's a very fine line between bankruptcy and success. And if you're not comfortable walking that line, you ain't going to be able to grow this business. Because I'll tell you right now, I got, you know, probably one point two million dollars worth of debt. And more than half and more than half of that, I'm a personal guarantor on. Right. That's before yeah. that's before the business had any credit, anything like that. Right. Like I got 10 trucks, I got all this stuff. Right. Yeah. Um that's a lot of debt that if the calls stop coming in and they don't come in for a while. Yeah. There's a fine yeah, line. It's going to be a different kind of call coming in. <laughs> yeah. There's a, yeah. like I said, there is a very fine line between bankruptcy and success and let that yeah. really like sink in for a minute. If you got to pause this, pause it. You got to be comfortable walking that tightrope between I'm going bankrupt and I'm going to have a multi-truck multi-million dollar company. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you got to be if if you're scared to death, and you go into the to the office looking scared to death, your your culture is shot. Your guys are going to be looking at you like, man, you were just telling me, oh man, this is going to be great. This is a great place to work. This is everything you've dreamed of. Come work here. No nights, no weekends. We got you. Come come here. And then two days later, everybody's sitting at the shop. And then we got yeah. a boss running around that's scared to death. Oh man, I don't know what we're gonna do. I guess I'm gonna have to send you home. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's why me and you, right? Once we got to the point where we had managers, right? Me and you were like, we made the 
the jump, uh, not a jump, if you will, but we made the decision, right, that if there's not a lot of calls on the board, guess who's guess whose butt is staying at home and not going to the office today? Yeah, because you make it ten times worse. Yeah, there's gonna be there'll be a mutiny. Uh, yeah. And you'll have a target on your back because you're the one that recruited them and you're the one that said, man, come on, this is this is where you want to be. Yeah, and it's going to be – and you're going to go through these seasons as you own this business, right? Like, you know, just talking about these slow times real quick, like anytime you make a major change to your business, whether that's hiring a new guy, buying a new truck, switching to piece rate, updating your piece rate, like anything you do – that is a major shock to your business. You ain't gonna have no calls the next it's day. It's an instant. It's a. It's like a light switch. You make a big move that's gonna put you yep. out of your comfort zone. The work shuts off. Yep. So if you're yeah, feeling, we just, oh yeah, no, go ahead. If you're feeling like that as a listener, you need to know that that you are you are not alone, and that is not uncommon. It's almost what's what's this what's what's the it's almost like a a catalyst for being slow is making a big move. Oh, I don't know if, I don't know if we got enough work for this guy. I don't know. Um, I'm going I'm to drag my feet. Okay. Now we're busy. I'm going to hire this guy next day. Boom. Nothing. Yeah. And it's not even you like call, a you call in the office to see if the phone works. Yeah. And honestly, I feel like, you know, not to go too off on that and uh, on a, like a tangent about this or anything. I'm just going to say it quick, but not only is it a catalyst for going slow, but I, I feel like the reason that it goes slow is because, man, God likes to test us, right? Absolutely. I, I know he likes to test me, right? Um, yeah. So, you know, say, say you know, you hire a new guy, it's testing. Does he have the resolve to go through with this? And is, is this guy going to work out? Or, you know, you switch to peace rate. Do your guys have the resolve to go through that slow day, slow two days, slow three days? to come out on the other side making more money than they ever have. Yeah, we like to call it spiritual warfare around here. And yeah. it, it it talks about, uh, we, we've talked about, if you don't believe that spiritual warfare is real, just, just pay attention to the chaos that ensues when you're trying to get out the door to go to church and you're trying to do something good chaos somebody forgot something they're the kids are fighting on the way you you get in an argument with your wife or your husband that if that's not enough to convince you that there 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 is more more to that than just bad luck it's not bad luck mm -hmm. um uh, i heard i heard somebody tell one time that 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 god is like a lifeguard and a trained lifeguard in order to save a person, will let that person struggle and struggle and struggle until they almost can't swim anymore. And then the lifeguard jumps in because he knows or she knows that if once they grab that person that's been struggling for uh, almost up until uh, unconsciousness, that they can't they can't drown them both. You mm -hmm. know, and if you think about that, that's a good um, metaphor <clears throat> for if if you're a believer. That's a good metaphor for how the Lord will let you struggle. And it's not in the, and, and I don't know, I'm not trying to go down on a, on a spiritual. Yeah. You neither just, neither it, was I, but you know, it's, you know, it, it makes sense when you think about it, that it's like, you know, we, we want to do something. We're going to be tested. We want to add a guy. We want to switch to piece rate. We want to update our piece rates. So our guys can make more money, but it's a little harder to make that money. Right. Like that's what we kind of just did. Um, we kind of, restructured our piece rate a little bit that that our base rate's a little bit higher but it's it's much harder to get out of that base rate so you know we were in a spot where our guys are averaging you know 20 to 30 hours a week right because they kind of get complacent and it's like you know they have a good week and then they kind of slow down the next week um so we wanted to make it so that it's like more incentive to get over that 30 mark which is where the company really starts making money right and then they can yeah. really start making money. We don't want them to get too comfortable living in that area. Yeah, and and they are being pulled out of their internal thermostat. That is a perfect example of how your guys will get lulled into a, a comfort zone of, man, I'm making this amount of money. That it's it's fine. But it doesn't make it doesn't mean that it's fine for the company. And then you see your payroll expenses start going up. And then you have to make a change and an adjustment and it throws everybody out of their comfort zone. So all they're trying to do, and 
And us too is we're trying to get back to our comfort zone where we're used to the thermostat, our internal internal thermostat being. And you have to fight against that. Everything that you do in business is going to be counterintuitive. Almost everything. The hard things, the one the, the ones that really can provide a breakthrough. Um, yeah. And that's why you got to have a little dog in you. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta <laughs> Bring that full dog. circle. But that's yeah. a perfect, that's a perfect little, you know, we were kind of just spitballing and went off on a little bit of a tangent there, but you know, you're talking about that internal thermostat and you're talking about how it's forcing them to recorrect that. Right. And that all yeah. again, boils back down to fear. Right. Absolutely. Hey, plumbing pro, you wouldn't plumb a house without a blueprint. So why are you trying to build your plumbing business without one? Grab your free copy of my Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint. In it, I lay out the exact specs on how to build a successful, self-sustaining, and very profitable plumbing business. Don't risk years of wasted time and money and failure. Grab your Million Dollar Plumber Blueprint now, and it's free. My gift to you for simply being a Coach's Corner follower. Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash free and plumb like a champion. So let's continue with part two of our four-part series that we made up on the fly last time we were talking. Um, as Everything fear, is on the fly. On the fly. Fear as it relates to the 12 modules of the Million Dollar Plumber Success Academy. Yeah, and it's not like you can get to a certain point and be like, oh man, thank God. Thank God that um, uh, nothing else is coming my way that, that's going to be difficult. That that was hard, mm-hmm. and I'm glad that that's over. You, you, may, you may do that for a minute or two, but you're going to go right back into something that's going to put you into mental anguish. Um, but it's a proven system. Like the uh, module four is scheduling like a pro. And that becomes immediately uncomfortable because what do you do when you schedule like a pro? You schedule every job that comes in for today, whether it's a hundred jobs or one job. And that is uncomfortable. You remember what it was like when you, when you found out now we have to schedule every job for today. Yeah, I mean that that's a that's a tough one, man. It's like, you know, we could have 15 undispatched calls on the board, right? They're gone to sign, they're sitting there, they're green, right? And uh, you know, another call comes in and the CSR is like, Well, we got time today between now and four. And you're like, Do we have time today? But you know, that call that just came in, maybe, you know, for you that's a grinder pump, right? Yeah. You know, that that's your big job, right? You know, for me, maybe that's a boiler system, right? And it's you know. Mrs. McGillicuddy's, you know, toilet that's running, she's going to have to go to the back of the line. And unless she's a member, which I'd be glad to tell you about our membership program, but um, (laughs) unless she's a member, she's going to have to go to the back of the line. And if that means she's going to have to get moved to tomorrow, she might not be happy about it. But most people are understanding like, hey, we got emergencies going on. Someone's house is flooding. Someone's got no heat. You know, unfortunately, you're going to have to use one of your other four toilets for tonight. You know? Um, Yeah. And if... And it's not, it's no different than going to an emergency room uh, or, or, or urgent care. If you come in and you got, and you've cut, you've cut your um, finger. Dang, hold on a second. Somebody's knocking at my door and they're, they're locked out. I think it's a cleaning lady. Hold on. All right. No worries. I'll keep going with that. Um, so uh, yeah, what he was going to say that is, you know, you go to an urgent care or you go to an ER, right. And uh yeah, he was going to say a finger. Say I went in there with, you know, a hangnail, right? And it's, you know, it's deep and whatever. I got to get them to cut it off because um, it's really hurting me. Um, and I, I walk in and there's there's no one in front of me, right? I'm next to go to go in and see the doctor, right? Well, someone walks in with a gunshot wound. Guess what? <laughs> He's going to be going ahead of me. Back of the line. <laughs> yeah, I can't be like, hey, gunshot guy, can you stop bleeding for like five minutes while they cut off my hangnail, you know? Um, so it's, it, that's why we call it triaging in MDP, um, is cause that that's stolen from a hospital setting where, you know, you go into the emergency room, you get your numbers, you get your little wristband, and then they're going to bring you in to see a nurse and triage it. That your nurse is going to say, this is what's going on. This is how bad it is. And then they're going to put you in some magical line. That's always seems to feel like you're at the back of it, no matter yeah. how bad it is. Um, and you know, to as Mrs. McGillicuddy's problem that I was talking about before, you know, her running toilet seems like it's a really big problem, just like my hangnail did when I went into the hospital. But once you tell her that there's a gunshot victim ahead of her, she's going to kind of settle down a little bit. Yeah. And everybody thinks that their problem is the biggest problem. You remember what it was like to work for contractors? 
They loved you when you were on the way. They loved you. Oh, man. Oh, great, dude. We'll see you when you get here. Well, what happens when you call and say, hey, man, I know I told you I was on the way, but I got to go take care of something. It's it's an urgent. Oh, man, we got the inspector coming, man. We're going to you're going to really put us behind, man. I don't know if I can do that. I'm just going to have to find somebody else. If, if you can't get if you can't get here, I'm just going to have to find somebody else. Really? I mean, are you really going to find somebody else? I, I don't I doubt it. But <laughs> not as cheap as you were letting them get away with. It. Yeah. Yeah. And we're halfway through the job. What are you going to do? Yeah. You, you relinquish the permit and come on, man, and get another another plumber in there. You just blow and smoke. Yes. Did it? Is, I'll, I'll give you that. It's frustrating. I'll give you that. But it's necessary. If somebody's uh, water heater's leaking all over the, the, the house, that is, that is more important. But, you, you know, it's a it's a catch 22, man, because, you know, you don't want to have to tell a customer about another customer that is all of a sudden more important than them. Yeah. But we're all humans and things do happen. And that's a bigger ticket item anyway, you know, and that may sound harsh. But at the end of the day, if you go home with with having taken care of a huge problem that really can't wait, you, you did your job. And and hopefully you can um, use your charm to talk to Miss Jones and, and tell her that we, we we are sorry for the inconvenience, but we will get to you. We will put you put you priority in the morning and we apologize for the inconvenience. Let us give you this ten percent discount for your trouble. Yep, and and we hope you'll stay with us. Yeah, uh, and we hope and you then, understand if that was your water heater that was leaking all over the floor. Yeah, um, and then you know, just on the other side of module four, we got some people are on pen and paper, right? I mean, that's the beginning of module four is get rid of the pen, get rid of the paper. Uh, you know, we introduced them to Service Titan um, there um, where. You know, there's, you know, I don't know, you've been on it a while, so I don't know if you remember the onboarding process for service time, but yeah. it's a lot of Learning algebra for the first time. Yeah. Um, more well, like. Well, it's probably easy for you, but. Yeah, I, I was, I was going to say that it's more like freaking calculus. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a lot of information there. So there's there's just, you know, or, you know, like, like me, right? Like I came from House Call Pro before. Mm -hmm. uh before I switched over to Service Titan and it was, you know, House Call Pro was simple and it ran for my phone and it was easy. It didn't do everything I needed it to do, but it was a lot easier to learn, a lot easier to click around in, right? Um, yeah. So, so the fear for me there was now I got this crazy system that's going to be costing me a ton of ton of money, you know, and I got to figure out how to use it and uh, and all that. I think you were on pen and paper before you went right to yeah. Service Titan, right? Yeah. Yeah, we had a court board up. <laughs> and we would tack the the invoices up we had a, like a traffic light system it'd be red was the most urgent yellow was uh, green was probably white and would hand them out to the technicians which there were only i think three at the time but we didn't have the ability to switch up like they had the pre-filled out invoices and it was just a, a cluster to try to say okay well you got to run across town and meet so and so give him that pre-filled out invoice or or make your own up because you got some blank ones in the truck because your your schedule just changed. Oh, what a nightmare. What mm. a nightmare. I can't even imagine trying to run a business on pen and paper nowadays. And what did you guys do before cell phones existed? <laughs> I'm not that old. <laughs> <laughs> How old do you think I am, man? <laughs> Well, you didn't just turn. We just 64? had a, a carrier pigeon, and we had some <laughs> carrier. <laughs> but I Dude, mean, I all remember. those things. That, uh, all I, those things just put in place. Just because of third generation, I remember before cell phones ex existed. Because you know, I was like, you know, four or five or six, like in the truck with my grandfather or my father, right? And then I remember, I remember when my grandfather bought one of those brief. Remember the briefcase phones? Yeah, bag phone. Yeah. He bought one of those little briefcase phones, and he'd be using that. Oh man! Yeah, I used, my first job was a delivery driver for this place called the Rib Room. They're not around anymore, but man, I would be driving my 1983 Nissan Sentra around, trying to deliver food, talking on that bag phone. It made such a big difference because I, man, <laughs> we we had to read maps back then. 
Yeah. That's how old I am. Unfolding a map, trying to find somebody's house. Yeah, when I first started driving, that's what we did. And then we'd print, and it was much safer when we started printing out MapQuest directions. Yeah. That really, that was my, you're, you're, it's on your passenger seat and you're like this, you're like, oh, when's my left? When's my left? And then you had to hit the little reset on the odometer because it's like in 0.9 <laughs> miles. Yeah. <laughs> so you're like, the trip, oh, the trip my, meter that me, nobody ever uses. Yeah. Let me reset my trip <laughs> so that I know in 0.8 miles to look at my paper again. <laughs> <laughs> my add have an ass was all over the place in the wrong direction i'm like yeah, i, oh, I got 11.2 miles it's fine turn up the music yeah i had yeah, and you just blow right by the road <laughs> oh yeah i have no um um i have i had so many customers that by the time i got to their house they were like dude we ordered this like two hours ago like we're not even hungry anymore take <laughs> i mean take a hike kick rocks oh yeah i remember delivering pizza and it's like you try to figure out where it is on the map and then you get there and it's cold. <laughs> You're like, yeah, oh yeah God. for sure. Oh man. What? Oh man. Just learning how to like, learning how to develop like a work ethic and, and, and work and take direction and hustle. Oh man, dude, that was my first job and I was, oh, I was terrible at it. <laughs> but, but like, um, Finding and hiring the right tech for your team can be challenging. Applicant Pro makes it so simple and easy. Your personal Applicant Pro hiring professional will do the brunt of the work for you. Writing job ads that will get you maximum applicant exposure. Manage the advertising of your jobs to over 20 major and local job boards. Even a pre-hire risk assessment is included to ensure your candidate matches the role expectations and your company values. To learn more about Applicant Pro and to take advantage of a special discount just for Coach's Corner listeners, Go to themilliondollarplumber.com forward slash applicant pro. Another fearful thing, and like in module five, that selling made easy. When 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 the when the the recipe for handling a service call was it's laid out right there. And still we got there's difficulty there, there's anxiety there. Because when you're when you're at module five, your prices have already they should already be aligned with what it's costing you and all the things that you've calculated to make a profit. And, and you realize you got to go in there and explain to Miss Jones what's going on, what you recommend. Here's your three options. And they're all expensive. And to sit there in silence while they mull it over is <laughs> it creates some anxiety there. <laughs> if it's 150, uh, bucks, no problem. Do it be backed up with work for months but it's not 150 dollars when you're when you're priced right no nothing's 150 dollars when you're priced right no did i cut out for a second no i can still hear you okay all right i didn't i thought my microphone cut out for a second um yeah no i mean that that's the anxiety uh you know when you're in the truck right and you gotta yeah. sit there and you gotta wait you gotta wait what you gotta wait and wait for them to make a decision um it i i wanted to focus a little more, more in module five on further down the line right because hopefully by this point you've got two or three trucks on the road um mm -hmm. you know you've gone through your hhr you've figured it out um you've built your price book and you, now you're in a place where you can step out of the truck mm -hmm. um so my fear is in, in module five anyway is hey do my are my guys actually following the system are they following this system that we laid out for them? Are they, you know, we talk about it like, are they walking up? Are they parking in front of the house? Are they not on the phone? Are they smoking a cigarette? Like all these things that we have no control over when our guys are out there doing stuff for us. Um, and then, you know, the mature content one, right? Like, are my guys making Mrs. Jones uncomfortable where she's going to tell her friends about it? And um, oh, yeah, when so they're like staring, staring her up and down. <clears throat> yeah, and I didn't realize this. Until I went through module five, I didn't realize the fear that should be thought of in module five is that these are things that we have to teach to grown people. Yeah. That that as as business owners, we never even thought of because it's second nature to us, right? We want to make our customers, we want to make them feel comfortable, mm -hmm. right? So all these little yeah. things like knocking on the door, stepping back, being invited in, not checking her out, right? Like all these things that we thought or common sense is like, well, now I gotta, I gotta make sure that I teach this to 
five, six, seven, eight guys, and also that they actually do it when they're out there. Uh, that yeah. can be that could be that could weigh on you. Yeah. Have you ever had to tell a guy not to call the customer darling or sweetheart or? <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> I, did, dude. I, I mean, I had. Oh, it was such a cringy. It was a cringy experience. Like, like we had this guy that every time we would go to lunch, and he would order. He'd be like, hey, sweetheart, how you doing? You got the most beautiful eyes. And it was like, please don't say oh, that. No. Please let me just disappear like like Homer Simpson into the bushes like this. <laughs> oh, please don't man. say stuff like that in my presence. And oh yeah, that's rough. And then so when I became when I became a boss, and that happened, I mean, that happens. And and you have to you can't let that go. It's such an awkward thing because they are so used to saying it like sweetheart is a big one where I'm from. Yeah. How are you doing sweetheart? Oh my gosh. And it, most females are like, please don't say that again. That is yeah. just, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, the connotation of that word is not very comforting and it doesn't make them want to buy anything. Yeah, no, sweetheart. You're definitely, should be you're, not, you're definitely not going to score a date. I mean, the the, the no. chances of you scoring a date on a service call <laughs> are. This isn't this isn't like this isn't like the adult websites where those kind of things happen. Like you're not scoring a, you're not scoring a date with Mrs. Yeah. Jones. Um, and you know, sweet sweetheart in particular should be reserved for like three to seven. Don't year say old it, girls. dude. Don't even say it, man. When you said what? it, it's like, oh, dude, you bring it back. Said what? Don't say sweetheart, man. And like when when I said it, <laughs> one thing, but when you said it, I was like, oh no, dude, don't do it. Oh, don't say it to me. No, <laughs> no. I mean that that's reserved for like your six year old niece. You know, yeah. that's that yeah. that's not that's not for the fifty two year old later. That's uh, the fifty two year old lady that's uh, you know taking your order at the diner. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or when you're on the front porch and they don't want you in the house anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we don't really want you to be here, but I guess we have to have you here because our basement's flooded, right? Like, or our water heater's not working, and you just roll up. You're like, "Oh, hey, sweetheart, nice to meet you." <laughs> um, and that's such but a no, that's no, just a I didn't. I never no, yeah, and that's that's what I'm saying because once you start working through module five and the whole service sales process, right? And Richard covers all this stuff. You're like, you know. I never even would have thought until you just said it that I would have to correct somebody on how they're addressing. It's not yeah. it's not always Mr. and Mrs. And Ooh. even that module or is Mrs. hard hard to listen to. And he tells you up front, hey, this is this is gonna it's like, you know, this is this is gonna be tough, but we gotta <laughs> go through it. And it, it, it yeah. is like it is necessary. You definitely don't want if you get a bad review about price or if you get a bad review of about even your your driving or whatever it is, imagine that's that's bad enough. But imagine getting a bad review about being a pervert on the job or whatever. <laughs> well, you know, you, should, you were, you know, that's not what you want at all because you can't take those down. And the person yeah. that said that kind of review is not taking it down. No, so there's no there's no matter there's no amount of refund that's going to make that one okay. No, and offering a refund would make it even worse because oh man we're just getting i just i just feel like i'm just digging into a just <laughs> yeah. digging I, deeper, deeper i think i think we, I think we should get i think yeah we got to get off the topic of the mature content one um but uh you know like even even like you know walking parking in front of the house walking up the sidewalk knocking on the door how many times tony three four three times i'm sorry four i was gonna say not don't knock three times but four yeah um stepping back waiting waited waiting for them to invite us in like these are all important steps that allow them to trust us right and it's something that you need to make sure that your guys are doing and you have no control over it yeah it's all nonverbal cues well most of it's nonverbal it's just you know your body language and um you're making them feel a certain way when you pull up, like you, you need to act like they're looking out the window because they probably are. So if you pull up, you come speeding up into the driveway on the phone, you know, that, that doesn't sound like, well, it does sound pretty bad. I shouldn't have said speeding up. Well, when you pull yeah. up and 
um, pull up in the road. Like if it's a neighborhood, pull up in the road because nine times out of 10, you're coming you come there first thing in the morning. That maybe not nine times out of 10, but let's just say don't pull in the driveway because there's a huge percent chance that somebody in that driveway is going to have to get out of that driveway while you're there. And then you're going to have to come be bopping out of the house with the job half done and move your van. And they're going to be able to look and see inside your van when, cause they're standing out there and, you know, it's just a, just, just a, just don't do it. Yeah. And it's, it's, you know, you have enough to overcome with, you know, your pricing, right. Um, and them being upset to begin with that something's wrong in their house. And then like, also all plumbers don't all look like, you know, Matthew McConaughey, right? Like my, my Cy Robertson looking self walks up to the knocks on the door. Like, Am I making you feel as warm and fuzzy as you want to feel right now? No, they'd rather it be Matthew McConaughey. But I'm, I'm going to do everything I can to overcome that and give them that level of Southern charm that he can give them being from Texas. Yeah. What a way to set the bar super high, by the way. <laughs> Why? Well, I mean, Matthew McConaughey, that's like the man. He's like the, he's like the, the top tier. Um, uh, Ladies, man. I mean, he. Oh, yeah. I guess if, if someone was going to get a date, it'd be him. But oh, that's smooth. I mean, between the looks and that smooth Southern draw, and yeah, his he knows politeness. what to say. He knows yeah. what to say. He's confident, not oh, cocky. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mrs. Jones would probably feel a little bit happier about her water heater being broken if it was him instead of me. But yeah, I can only do I. You know, I, I gotta I gotta make up for that with with my charm and being uh polite, right? It it, it comes yeah. down to like basic manners, right? Being invited into someone's house. Pretend you're a vampire. Can't go in someone's house unless they invite you. I said that to yeah. my guys. That's what I think about a vampire. <laughs> yeah, I say knock on the door, step back and just stand there, and you can't go into that house till they invite you in. Even if they're staring at you, like why aren't you coming in? Say them, is it okay you're if standing I come there, you're standing there like this? <laughs> Is it okay well, if I come like, inside? <laughs> just think about it like if you started off, like you got you got uh, like a zero in the middle of the scale to negative 10 to positive 10. When you, you're doing things to either go in the positive or the negative every single step of the way, you know, if you come and walking you probably, up. And you probably yard, start off at like a negative two, negative three because they're having a bad day already. Right. Yeah. You don't start off at zero, but yeah. you pull up in the front of the house and you come walking through their yard, you don't know just because I may not think it's a big deal to walk through somebody's grass, man, you may have a a person that is adamant and you know how the, some people are just, man. Oh, especially about hard. lawns. Oh, yeah. do, yourself a, do yourself a favor. If you, if you want to see the most hysterical group on Facebook, go on Facebook and search for lawn care nuts. These people are insane about grass. Insane. They spend tens of thousands of dollars like a year on these grass supplements and all this crazy stuff, this special fertilizer. You could be walking up to one of those people's houses and you know they just put their special $2,000 fertilizer on to make sure their grass is greener than the guy next door who's also on the site. It's, <laughs> oh, show your guys yeah, lawn care nuts and say, you might be walking up to one of these people's house and we ain't going to sell them anything if you do that. Yeah, you go further into the negative. And you can't, there's no way to judge that because we just assume that people think like us, but yeah, that oh, no, they're be- like, they're like, oh, you know, they'll post on there. I'm having my daughter's sixth birthday and she really wants a bounce house. But if I put a bounce house, it's going to kill my lawn. Do you think I could put it in the middle of the street? <laughs> <laughs> and block the whole street. Oh yeah. yeah. Perfect idea. <laughs> Well, they're, and, they're and too, if you if you go if you go from walking in the grass to the per, the customer sees you intentionally going in on onto the driveway onto the sidewalk like they intended for you to do, that swings it in the positive direction, you know. And don't go up there beating on the door. Go up there and knock four times and step back away. Yeah, um, we don't want them to think it's the FBI. Right, and you don't want to be all up in her face when when she answers the door. Yeah, like there was a guy. There was a guy that came to the like we have a no soliciting sign in our in the front of our neighborhood. It may as well be a sign that says "Come on in, sell everything." That 
<laughs> whatever, just come on in, just pedal your wares in our neighborhood. That's what the sign should say because nobody pays attention to it. But somebody knocked on the door and um, I opened it and the guy was standing like 20 feet away from me. Like he was way back there. And uh, he was fr- he was trying to sell lawn care service. The name of it, I don't I, I I don't know if I'll get in trouble for that. I don't think it's a national company, but the the name of the company was. He said, "Hey, I'm 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 so and so with Weed Man," and I was like, <laughs> "That is a national company. <laughs> it's not it's we, not I was like, it's not, too. not legal in 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 Alabama yet, my good man. <laughs> uh, but it was a lawn care service. But anyway, I don't know why well, we." talking about that but weed man in, in mobile alabama set, takes on a whole nother meaning <laughs> that's not the first thing i think about when oh long no. i i remember the first time i saw one of those trucks i was like eh, we're about two years away from that being legalized <laughs> and they're really ahead of the game yeah well yeah they were making sure that they got their stock in place yeah oh, man. yeah they got their brands you know i I want to touch on that for a second, just because it shocked me. Because I'm I'm not a partaker of drugs, right? Like, right. I'm not good not a me. big not a big fan. Just Thinking figured I'd throw choice. that out there. Figured right. I'd throw that out there. When right. I was still in the truck, though, we got called right when a dispense the first dispensary in our area opened up after it got legalized. Is cannabis legal in where you're at? It is. Yeah. Um. So it was it was like. This is like maybe 18 months, two years ago, it had just gotten legalized and it was like a medical dispensary that now they were selling to the general public mm-hmm. and their sewer was backed up when we were out there jetting their sewer and it was like 400 feet long. Mm-hmm. Um, so we were there, I mean, we were there for, I don't know, five or six hours and I could not believe the amount of people going in and out of this place on their lunch break, before work, after work. It was, I think it was a Friday. And when I tell you that there was a 50 person line outside the door at like all times throughout the day. And then inside was lines, you know, like when you go, when you go to Disney, I know you know about Disney. So when you go to yeah. Disney and you got the, the turnstiles that you got to yeah. walk through, right? So they jam more people in there. So the whole inside of that 2000 square foot building was that to get up to a counter where you could order your whatever weed um what kind I mean, of trip do you what kind of trip do you want to go on today sir yeah yeah <laughs> do you Take want it fast panic? we got a line yeah. behind you do you want panic at the disco or do you want matthew mcconaughey <laughs> hey <laughs> all right all right all right <laughs> all right i'm sure that beat that one <laughs> we beat that one. that's i think um here's a tough one and we, we actually kind of hit on this a little bit in the beginning with the slow times how do you feel about making the phone ring, Tony Wally? Oh, man. I, I tell you what, um, Matt Delna gave me some good advice about, <clears throat> about that, about the anxiety that comes along with raising your Google LSA budget way higher than you're comfortable with. I mean, from the jump, you have to increase your budget so google knows that you're serious about taking these calls and um he just said man you just got to be able to stomach the amount of money that you're putting in because it's only going to get bigger but you know what's your for the people what's your google lsa budget just so they know what's what it it needs to be million dollars a week or as as high as it'll go oh that's it mike's 35 million a week I said it so long ago that I can't, but I remember this is crazy. Yeah. I could get up to 1.4 million service calls a week. (laughs) Yeah. I had, I had the guy from uh, search Kings. He's like, dude, you, you really ought to think about this. Like what if there is a catastrophic event and like people just call and call and call. I was like, well, you know what? We got to, we got to, we got to plan for that. So let's, if that happens, I'm just going to roll the dice. Because well, yeah, the, and it happens. It happened to us. You remember back in September, it happened to us, and I'm, yeah. I'm sure it's happening in other. You know, it's. I know actually, Bo McKenzie. I was talking to him yesterday, and uh, he's. Uh, they have a hundred. Yesterday, they had a hundred and ten calls backlogged for their oh. technicians of of calls that were booked that they were going to that they hadn't got to yet. Man, that just right there. That just you get that tight spot in your <laughs> chest. You're like, oh. I mean, the flip side. The flip side is, well, no, I was just say the flip side is that you're 
you're making money. <laughs> if those amount of calls are coming in, you're making you're making good money. So you're making good money. And it's never gonna be the pendulum is never gonna swing and stay where it's comfortable. Like the easily balanced, it's just comfortable. We're not too busy, we're not too um slow. There's never there, right? Like it like things cause us to be slow. Uh, during the time, different times of the year where it's different, you live in a different part of the the country where sometimes I'm like just kind of puzzled as why you're so busy and I'm so slow and then vice versa. If we're super mm -hmm. busy and you're slow, it just happens. And you can't lull yourself into thinking I'm, I'm just immune to this. I've done all these steps and I'm just immune to it. No reason for me to, to be concerned. It's, um you know, we're always going to be busy. Um, that's when you're going to stop being busy and start being slow. And you may be slow for a prolonged period of time, but you just got to be able to stomach that. You can't run to Google and say, okay, I don't want to spend any more money. We're, we're slow and I can't afford it. That's the worst thing you can do. Oh, yeah. And once you turn that ad off or you do anything of that sort, um, you know, that that's going to affect your ad going forward, you know? Yeah, Google thinks, oh, well, they must not be able to um, to afford it, and they can't take all these jobs on. And, I yeah, think and that's, I mean, that's a that's that's a uh, Google is a whole a whole conversation to itself. <laughs> yeah, so but I mean, what that comes down to, you know, the solution is you're going to constantly, you know, if you're running your company right and advertising and all that stuff, hiring guys, you're going to be constantly swinging back and forth between having two techs sitting at the shop. And have no job to go to and be taking two to three calls a day and pushing them to tomorrow. Yeah. And that's where you want to live. You want some days to be pushing calls to tomorrow and you want some days you have to text the shop. So if that call comes in at three o'clock for that leaking water heater, you can get someone there in 30 minutes and they're happy that you got there so fast and you're professional. And um, that's, that's really, that's, that's the idea, ideal spot that you want to be in. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's enough fear talk for today. What do you think? Yeah, I think we should wrap it up. Let these people think about something happy, like go to the dispensary. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or get ready for Mardi Gras. Because Mardi or Gras, get ready for Mardi Gras. Yep. Or just think oh, about let's how get great out it's gonna. Or just think about how great it's gonna be when there's a twelve team playoff next year, and we get a chance at redemption against Alabama after they yeah. beat us in the SEC championship game. Yep, it's gonna be a whole different whole different ball game literally no yeah. pun intended all right guys well um let's get out of here if you enjoyed this make sure you like and subscribe down below and uh it was great talking with y'all see you guys next time all right well that does it for this episode of the coach's corner make sure to like and subscribe below and make sure you join us on our next episode to continue to learn how to stop thinking like a tradesman and start thinking like a ceo thanks for stopping by